Roger, will do. Mm. Yeah, you can see that. And uh, Kirk, he leaves his past the transom. Copy. 2-2-5. Van deck, umbilicals all the way out. Copy, umbilical out. What's that? Uh, we're heading most more or less into it, so you shouldn't have to fight too bad, and we are streaming ahead a little bit. Um, but yeah, there is current, it's just that we're heading into it. Let me know if you find otherwise. Atlanta sliding out. What about that titanium sphere on the front? <laughs> We'll have to look at the pitch. <laughs> Looks like Atalanta in water. Van deck, Atalanta is off the deck and down in the water. Copy. Got some uh, bad USBL pings. We will wait a moment for good ones. It's looking decent. Not enough stuff on the porch. Needs more stuff. Those gas tights in there? Nice. Needs more cowbell. Needs, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Bridge. Uh, continue on track, uh, standby. Pilots, we're still streaming. Uh, usually we still stream till about 50. Um, let me know if you'd like to hold or continue. Negative 20 delta. This is an audio slate for dive 1969 UTC 052410 mark 
two two seven one. I think your auto head's messing with you now. Where's the new place I'm looking at for the payout of the winch? Is it, is it on that screen over there, the winch payout? 67? Okay, there we go. Payout. The one that says payout? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Thank you. I was, I was always used to look there under the display. Raj. And deck, all stop at 75 meters. Roger that, all stop at 75 meters. Control has been sent up. Copy, control sent. Van has control. How do you guys feel? Can I stop the ship? Bridge, nav. We can hold position here. Thank you. He's going rogue. All right, so uh, once we get a bit more settled, um, I'm gonna move the ship towards the site. I'll let you guys settle out in speed. Yeah, yeah, roger. Roger, Roger. I don't mind. I'll wait. So we got plenty of time. <laughs> what are our tasks here? First thing is inspect the Mothra IP. Swap the BVS. And the BVS is not too far from the IP to the north. Okay. Makes sense. We can monitor. I land you over here. Approach the IP. New feature, yeah. Not bad, huh? Yeah. Um, this is just an image layer, but we do have some that are. Go ahead, Bridge. Roger that, thank you. 
Uh, we can put, if we have floating point geo, uh, geotiffs or any XYZs or whatever, we can put depth layers and then like it's depth yeah. queryable. So like with the mouse, it'll show the depth there yeah. rather than relying on contours. <clears throat> but we don't have that for this site. Well, here's an SPL, I think. In high res. Uh, ships changing heading, so just so you're aware, down the road, when you're questioning your tether, it looks like they're at Z. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's only going to get worse, because <laughs> he's, he's t he changing his heading to, to starboard. Okay. But yeah, you can expect, you can pass that along, there might be a quarter in both. What's our delta? Good. Target depth two two yep seven one or one seven seven one. Ravi, can you hear me? Hello. Y yeah, we're. We're having an issue with the CTD. Is it? Oh, can you guys power oh, cycle yeah, we that? To, we or? have to power it on. Oh, you have to power it on. There we go. Thank you. Well, Rick, I give it a few. I don't think it was powered. So it's powered on now. It's powered on. Thank you. Yes. Jacob, I'm going to enable the thrusters on Atlanta. I'm going to slow down right here. Mark. No, I just don't see Dan. Dan didn't enable thrusters. Oh, yeah, you can enable them. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was just asking. Yeah. All right, we're at depth of 300 meters. I'm going to move the ship closer to the site. Um, so we're going to kind of go over this way. We're going to go 100 meters, zero to zero. Yeah. Uh, we'll start a little farther off. Bridge, Nav. Can we step 100 meters, 100 zero, zero meters, bearing 030? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. Uh, speed 0.5 is fine. Thank you. Okay, so that'll put you over here with Atalanta, where okay. my cursor is, and then you'll be in range of the IP. I, but when we land, we're just going to have to be cautious. I would rather you be out here. Yeah, instead of... Not near there. Yeah. So we'll have to... Right mm. Air on the side of caution. Yeah. Yes. Sounds like we're pretty matched on our uh, descent, so I'm going to keep it. Yep, keep it there. Raj. I think they want to go a little bit slower for this transect. Anyway, so. 
I can just slow down the video pay playback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Endeavor Ventfield. You ready? I don't know. It's going to be fun. Now. Let's have some fun tonight. Let's have some fun. Yeah, so let me show you guys a little something in the dab plan. Yeah. Enlighten. So what we're going to be doing in the beginning, um, we're going to go to the IP, we're going to inspect the IP, and then we're going to be swapping the uh, BVS. So we got to turn some stuff off, take the... Sphere off the porch, do some stuff with the sphere, turn the thing back on, some cast sites. Okay. Yeah. Then later, we get this, we're going to be, uh -huh. yeah, deploying. Dan, Dan wants to fly this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. That, that will be a, a Danism. <laughs> so this is historically, um, we have to put the temperature probe in hot vent fluid. But we also have to put it in range of somewhere we can land the pig. Um, so okay. there's usually not a lot of shellfish on this particular vent in Mothra. There's not a lot of places okay, to so land this. So it's kind of like that. This thing's got some Just memory jam in it. it in yeah, somewhere? yeah. So it, it's going to be where we can place that, and then where we can get the fluid. So okay. Fun part. <clears throat> One hour to bottom. So this is the this is south of the main endeavor site where yeah. they have the nodes, so this is like Kind of its own little, little one down here. Oh, okay. Less instrumentation. So I gotta print some kind of a manual tighten up a screw and this thing adjusts. Yeah. <laughs> Just like. First, you gotta put a piece of tape over the don't lock out. <laughs> don't lock out though. Under no hey, circumstances. Danny, <laughs> just had curiosity. Were you uh, texting somebody earlier that you were on camera? Um, when you did a close-up on me? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, that was my partner. <laughs> uh, that's sure. what I thought. I thought the way you looked at the camera, I'm like, he's texting his partner. I'm gonna let him see Danny up close. So I and I came. A, I got a I got a screenshot of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> like texted to you after the fact. Atlanta that's is awesome. on the move. Great towards us. <laughs> Actually, that would work. We normally like j jostle the arm, like take the arm out and Sure, we can Give do it a that. flex if you want to do that. I don't have a down. camera for it, but I can, uh, we can bubble cam it. Bubble yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, bubble it. As long as you're okay with losing the gauges for a few. <laughs> well, that's a cool view, or a cool sight. Laser. <laughs> the lens is shiny. Yeah, it's a good porch view. Okay. Craft coming out. We'll do some exercising. Yep. Been enabled, let's see. Yep. Yep. Ah, jaws are still slow, but they're not bad. I like it. Danny, so you know we're in a partial zone. That's okay. I'm just exercising. Looks like you're tugging Atalanta quite a bit. Oh, yeah.
See, like, because we're going that way, uh, Lanta's going straight because uh, you're yeah. going that way. <laughs> I can give it a little... See how those vectors work? <laughs> yeah, little vectors. Okay. Yep, put it where it feels good. Vectors. Yeah, vectors. <laughs> Slightly negative delta, but it looks like you're gaining back hey, mostly. Are you on SPL? Uh, we'll go back to number preset number two. Go back to a little bit of a Z. Oh, crazy zoom. Alternatively, I could just back us way off and start over here, but this is actually gets sent to some terrain too, so I really just want to land you right there. Yep. Hey. Nice. Yes. Uh, can where can we get find the folder for t yesterday's dive? Uh, is on the the same Google Drive that. Seems like this is way gained. If that's only 10 meters per division, the gain is like crazy. <laughs> that's better. It's probably still too much, and I bet this one's not enough. Like, they shouldn't be reflecting off of anything. No sub bottom, so we find the bottom with a uh, altimeter or DVL? What's better? DVL will pick it up quick, yeah, like sooner because it's like 80, 80, 90 yeah, or so yeah. meters, yeah. And failing but that, we, we use kinda, the ROV. That was one of the things I was kind of requesting is, um, well, actually, that was in Little Herc because Little Herc doesn't have a DVL, so there's nothing mm -hmm. that tells you without the sub bottom now. Um, long term request, it'd be cool to get the sub bottom back on Atalanta or at least have a time series graph of the, of the, um, Altitude, as spotty as it is. Am I going faster than you? I'm going slower. Uh, well, let's wait till we get I to it. I can slow down if you want. I'm. I just sped up though, so I should okay. catch up. Well, now that I'm not using the arm, you might be able to catch back up. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. So just for folks watching from home, we are headed to um, Mothra at the Endeavour Hydrothermal Vent Field. Do and I have uh, on you, you on SPL there? Yeah. Okay, I can't, can't quite. Oh, that's why. That's me. <laughs> Somebody did that. Somebody did that. It was not me. <laughs> you can hear us all now, Renny? Yeah, somebody turned that way down. All right. Well, uh, depth tonight. What do we got? Is it 2,200 meters? Just about 2,271 meters. Yep. Right on. So we are going to be uh, descending for a while here. Is that right? That's right. Um, we're at about 590 meters right now on the way down. So going down around 30 meters a minute, get there just under an hour. Right when on. we get there, we'll have some setup. Um, I'm going to try to land in a pseudo benign territory uh, near the instrument platform get set up and then do a visual inspection there um, before we do anything anything else with instruments and with the vents itself. Right on. Thanks for the details there, Rennie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if Mike is still listening, but there is someone out there who wants to say good luck on the dive and a special shout out to Chipmunk Mike Burns. Mm. <laughs> nice. All right. Chipmunk. And apparently... Chipmunk. going to have to... Mike is the best <laughs> deck Are you chief. writing on your hand? I'm going to write MB Chipmunk because I want to bring that one up to him. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if Mike is going to be happy that I mentioned that. So. No, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't tell him it was Lauren. Yeah. Kind of coming right down there. What's that? Right where you said I yeah, didn't yeah, want to be. Yeah, don't be there. 
No, you're fine. You got plenty of time to get over. But we'll try to get some lateral. Because also at these depths and near yeah. the vents, sometimes the it's a little bit off the way the sound bends. So okay. Um, I'll I'll put in a, a a full profile once we get on site. See if we can alleviate any kind of uh, influence of the sound velocity, but. Sometimes that vent fluid has these lenses of the mineral-laden water, and I don't know if that's kind of like a microclimate of different sound speed near. Hey, Herc, could you turn on this, the still cam? Yes. I'm going to... Where is it? Should be on. Hey, pilots, video. Uh, can we do a white balance just for training on the way down so I can cut Pete loose until his watch? Sure. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Pete, let's come full wide on the Herc. Uh, so sci is science all good with that? Just uh, Yeah, I checked with okay, Fabio. Cool. Yeah. Good. Full wide. That's good. And push your focus to far. You're going to have to bring out Dan the arm. going to position the arm for you. You've already done it. And, uh, nope, there's a white balance procedure right behind the controller. Is that a good spot for the arm? You can kind of bring it out and center it. Yep. There's a white to the white SPL. square right there. Yeah. You can be on SPL if you want. Your choice. You might need to do the tilting and all that business. Yeah, we'll come in in just a second. So now we're going to frame this up. Yeah, get those laterals on there. Stick lock me. Ready? Yep. So you got to zoom until that takes nice. up eighty percent of the pick frame. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. And there, so you got to zoom I'm always a bit. Ready. <laughs> until it starts to leave the frame, and then yeah. let Danny center it up for you. Oh, I got it. Oh, yeah, and then arm. keep yeah. zooming in. And you end up going to full zoom, but let him get it right in the center there. Give him room to work. That's fine. Nope, keep right where you are. That's good. Do you want the color or the white? A little bit more zoom. We'll focus mainly on the zoom right now. Oh, we want the white, sorry. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. I can, uh, yeah. You want to go to full zoom, full zoom, and you want to focus, and then you want to get your iris to about 80%. There it is. Yeah, looks good. And you might see if you can, that definitely is not 80% of the frame. So I would ask him if he could bump the camera right just a little bit or move the arm. There's arm move. I would buy that for a dollar. So now we're ready. So before, the first thing we do is a black porch, balance. Just in case while we're zoomed but in. Before we do black balance, we would talk on SPL and we would say quite literally, I'm going to black balance the camera. This is going to take about 10 seconds. The camera's going to so go intentionally black on the porch and the starting now. Yeah. Yeah. And then I pull this towards me and I release it. ABB, auto black sure balance. Not poking at it. I look up at my yeah. parade or I zoom my uh, vector to 10 times. Yeah, you don't have right. to, you, yeah. you can trust it. And Not that I don't trust it, you, Danny. It's always good to double check. Uh, I can do it <laughs> if you want. Uh, so we're gonna take the camera black. This is intentional. Yeah, you gotta, gotta, gotta tell them that. Uh, don't hold it there, just pull and release. And then the light should go out. That's a good black balance. Then just push and release away from you for AWB, which is auto white balance. And then you'll see parade line, line up in lightning. And then this light will go out. 
we got it good. So then we're going to store that in the preset one by pressing and holding that until you hear a very light beep. Uh, that was, did you hear the beep? You just recalled memory one. So now you have to black balance and white balance again. So you would need to tell them that you're black balancing. Uh, you need, they're not hearing you. You need to talk on SPL. Okay. There you go. Let's try this again. We're going to black balance one more time. Roger that. Okay. It will go dark for about 10 seconds. Just pull and release. There you go. And wait. There you go. If that light blinked and you heard a beep, you would have to repeat. Then same thing for white balance. Push away and release. It'll white balance real quick. It's already white balance. Then that light will go out. Now you have to push and hold on that until you hear a beep. There you go. And then you can say white balance complete. Thank you so very much, capable and competent pilots. <laughs> There you go. Oh, so polite. <laughs> I like how I get the questioning look from them. Like, are you talking to us? <laughs> so, Ed, and then come full. Wa yeah, go ahead, Danny. Do you have to uh, color balance as well, or that does? That actually is our color balance. So, oh, okay. um, uh, one of these times, Danny, why don't you come over and sit with me when we do that, and I'll show you exactly what we're doing and the result we get. Um, if you go and see an ROV that has red, green, and blue uh, 88 uh, scotch electrical tape on it, that almost always was me or somebody who worked with me and is cheating. Um, and that's because some of the ROVs I worked with uh, will invert the chrominance channel occasionally. And when that happens, the arm will look exactly like that, but that tape will be blue, green, and red. And gotcha. so that's just a little indicator to me. Those should always be red, green, and then blue. So just a way I keep an eye on my ROV color. And then you can probably iris up a bit. This is why we call you Video Ed. Yeah. Okay. The Video uh, Guru. Are we ready to uh, get back to the yeah. science transfer? Okay, I'm yep. going to study on. Yeah, and this, uh, th that was opportunistic okay. image viewing. This was not part of a transect. Roger. Yeah, opportunistic. Yeah. Let's get back to the opportunity. <laughs> 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 All right, now let me try white balance. Right <laughs> yeah. Thanks, I'll guys. I'll Appreciate get my it. hand yep. at it. <laughs> Can I get a, you to pan over for me yeah. for a second? Sorry. Just so I can see what I'm doing at the yep. arm. There you go. So our delta's cre okay. crept up to negative yeah. 13. Um, Losing some yeah. down oh, to the craft. The, just because I'm when I. Oh, yeah. Well, you're in a good uh, zone right now. Okay. So you can kind of just go straight from there, maybe slightly adjust laterals as we, as we go. Yeah. I could slow down the winch too if necessary. That's okay. I'll catch up. Pilots, do you want me to zoom back in a little bit? I will. Center back up first. And Can you use those as goalposts? They're pretty centered. <laughs> yeah. All right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> One finger. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Just ask and you shall receive. It goes away. Science, how does that brightness level look? Fabio, you can sh share that share that on SPL. Fabio, are you there? Y oh, he's not on headset? You can put your headset on and share, it on, share that on SPL if you want. Hey, Fabio, how does this uh, brightness level look before going down? You want a little brighter? Just a little bit? Oh, and press down as well. How's that? I like less bright. Okay. We have lots of less bright. <laughs> Let me pour some on. <laughs> the more. Boy, do I have the environment for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right there? That's about as low as we can take the black levels. I think it's good. Okay, great. Thank you very much.
So we've got a, a question from viewers out there. And uh, folks are asking about the, the sediment that's passing as we go down. So I asked Fabio to uh, tell um, us a little bit about it. Those are actually not, we are very far offshore. There's not a lot of sediments in the water. The water's pretty darn clear, actually. So this is um, mostly plankton. We are still on the top uh, 1,000 meters of the water column. There's still quite a bit of, uh, we're in the, what we call a twilight zone. Still lots of um, planktonic or organisms. And we are now descending at the higher speed to um, uh, fulfill our dive objectives. We're now doing a, a, a transect, actually. Um, so we are Otherwise, we'll have to be descending much slower so we can focus on organisms. But yes, those are marine organisms, not sediments. Right on. All right. Thanks very much. And uh, pilots, do you have time for a question? You got to get on SPL and then you'll be good. Sure, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, folks are wondering um, how close the ROV can get to a hydrothermal vent. Um, well, I've never flown a vehicle at a hydrothermal vent before, so I'm going to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> um, trial and error? Yeah. I'm so not sure if that's advisable, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We can Good. get pretty close. Um, it starts getting a little hot, but we try to keep mostly metal on the front of the ROV near the front yeah. where we're going to stick the probe. We do have a rubber bumper bar, so that is... So uh, whoever is listening, so as we, as we go to uh, put a probe into this... Uh, a temperature probe into the vent, you'll find that getting that probe into the hottest vent fluid is pretty delicate uh, because that fluid cools very quickly. So we'll be flying around and even landing on certain parts of the vent. Um, that hot fluid cools so quickly that you can kind of safely operate as long as you're not landed on those point sources. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Um, so and the brow is always a consideration if you've got some overhang and you've got things you can burn up there. Mm -hmm. um, the tether is a consideration uh, because although we have lots of cameras on all the vehicles, um, the full tether view isn't always uh, possible, especially in some of the cloudy water. Um, so we don't want to get that tether burnt on chimneys either. And um, and because we do have a two-part ROV system, we'll have Hercules that'll be close to the vents, and we have Atalanta above. But we have to position it in a way that it's not, um, you know, at at risk of running into any of these spires. Right. Yeah. And um, a follow-up question to all that um, is: just does the temperature affect the performance? Of the ROV? I would imagine if mm. it was in the extremely high temperatures, yes. Yes. If, if there yeah. were point sources that were on elements of the ROV, yes. Um, but but in that slightly warmer water um, around it, <coughs> no, because we can operate the ROV yeah. in, in that same temperature and other depths. Right on. The main thing it would affect would be the volume of oil. Mm -hmm. in uh, hydraulics. But you could certainly burn it if you were on the wrong part. <laughs> uh huh. Yes. You could certainly that burn something. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. I know yesterday someone was uh, asking the pilots, you know, what's what's your favorite thing you do, and uh, or what what excites you the most? And people were pretty excited about uh, using the temperature probe. So, are, are there plans to use the temperature probe tonight? I, I, I would think so. so yeah if yeah. we're placing the bars in we want to yeah. get that um we want to get that Just putting the that temperature probe. probe about a meter away i think it says in the dive plan yeah we want to get the temperature probe we have to slowly warm up the the bars um so we don't immediately put it in the in the hot vent usually and we have to kind of warm it up warm it up and uh and get it into those those uh vents and what happens with these vents is the piping changes over time. So 
Um, we're trying to get into the hottest part, but also in a part of the vent that seems like it's not just a tiny little piece that's coming off, but kind of part of a main pipe, uh, for lack of a better term. Main orifice. Orifice. Right on. And uh, there's someone who's asked a question a number of times, so they're really keen for me to, to pass this along. Hmm. <laughs> they they want, want to know about uh, the claws that you're using or the grabbing arms that you got on the on Herc right now. They don't get swapped out, do they? So mm, you, They do. Oh, they do get they swapped do. out. All right. We okay. several different claws. So right now, the viewer is noticing that the... Um, the there looks like there might be a stronger strength claw being used. Is that correct? Can you tell us about it? So these are called the uh, parallel pl claws, parallel claws, and they are designed to basically be just like a vice grip. So you can hold on to things uh, a lot more tighter and uh, do a lot more mechanical work with them. This is another jaws where it's like a three jaw. So you have two main prongs and a third jaw, and mm -hmm. then you can basically clamp around something or use the fingers to pick up small objects on the bottom. Right yeah. on. Thanks, Danny. Is, are you talking about the uh, like interlocking curved ones, Danny, that yeah. we call the nagel yeah. tooth or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Uh, tri uh, a triple jaw. Yeah. yeah. We also have an, uh, a Coral version fingers. of those that are longer, as Jake just said, that have a, in the Yes. Long part of the fingers have a, um, the snaggle tooth a, a yeah. snipping mechanism and For a gripping mechanism to call them the coral cutters. So we're able to snip coral and take a piece gently. Nope. Nope. don't want to shut off the CTD because they get mad. I want to say that it was there before the CTD got turned on. All right, we're about halfway down, 11. 1150 meters depth. current tension? Oh, 5600 right there. Weather check. Um, cloudy with a chance of meatballs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, we don't have much wind at all, only a couple knots, and it was around 10 when we launched between a half knot and one knot of current. Aren't normally. So, um, and the swells pretty low. Fog. Thank you, Rooney, for the 5 o'clock news. Oh, sure thing. <laughs> normally, don't see fog <laughs> and wind. Overcast, foggy, light wind. <laughs> Stagnant. <laughs> what, do we, what do you call it? A misting? Misting. There we go. We had a, a foghorn going <laughs> earlier. You can tell that he's from the Pacific Northwest. He's got 30 words for rain. <laughs> <laughs> Like the weather, wait 10 minutes. Yeah. Same is true in Hawaii. Yep. Yeah, but for the Northwest, we have mist, light mist, sun breaks, sun showers, showers, and sun breaks. Yeah, you'll get the nice sun out, and you'll start to get ready to go outside, get to do something, and all of a sudden, rain. <laughs> Oh, 
I'll take the opportunity to ask a follow-up question about the claw. Um, is someone's asking is the claw that we're using right now a magnum claw and does it also get swapped i don't know the name of the claw a <laughs> magnum claw the arm is a craft arm predator. is a craft predator yeah. yeah and i'm guessing that the claws are all made by craft i believe so yes these are made by craft or craft version um the um shilling arms have a, a version very similar but they're titanium we found out yesterday that these are yes. actually uh they're 400 magnetic. series magnetic stainless yeah. magnetic claws magnetic yes yeah hey, cool. i was fiddling around and all of a sudden the magnet for the suction hose boom ah. on the claws just there you go. there okay yeah. but but is it a claw <laughs> or is it a jaw? This is a jaw. This is a jaw. This is a jaw. Claw is something that a grizzly bear has, or a tiger. Dan, you're very clear at that station. <laughs> that Hold on, like let me turn you were, down. You were made for that chart uh -huh. station. He can't fiddle around back there. <laughs> oh, yes, he's got a KVM station. He's all I over. I do. Well, yeah. you, I know, you know, over. Dan, if you ever decide to stop being a pilot, you could just read audiobooks for people. Really? <laughs> we had people write that in before. Yeah. People love Dan's voice. I think my voice I'll sounds dorky. That. <laughs> yeah. Just a nice sultry, uh, relaxing <laughs> sultry tone. tone. So yeah. Delta Dan. Delta Dan in the morning, early a.m. <laughs> Might be the overnight. <laughs> yeah, it's usually the overnight. <laughs> Dan in the late show. You slow down a bit. Yeah. I was like, where'd the BSR go? <laughs> Bubble, it's giving me a pain. I'm trying to zoom in just a little bit and just full zoom. <laughs> full out zoom. Full zoom. With the joystick or the software? Uh, both. Really? Hmm. I wonder if there's a something for me to fiddle with. But wait a minute, maybe not. Oh, you're only 13. You got late years to go. Yeah, and, and Dan, we got uh, affirmative that you should definitely do audiobooks. A viewer out there is a fan of the voice. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I think Danny's just fibbing about the zoom speed to keep you away from the vehicles <laughs> and busy with something else. I've got an engineer up yep. here looking at settings. <laughs> <laughs> Set up wizard. What's that do? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> He's three keys or uh, mouse clicks ahead of you already. You're saying uh, focus is too fast or zoom? Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's no speed limit for it here. There is. It's on the other page. <laughs> You know this software better than yep. I do. Back out one uh, one level. Cancel? Yep. Go ahead and go back to joystick. Joystick. Hey. Calibrate. You've reached her tech support. Eh. Oh. Yeah, this is where we put Max yeah, speed. Yeah, you want to slow down your uh, left stick, probably your Y down, slow it down to like 30 maybe. It's the right stick, right? Uh, right Y and X. Yeah, X yeah, and y. Right, yeah, it's right stick, correct. Speed mode variable. Should go 50 again? Mm hmm. Well, I can't, doesn't take a number. Wait, can I hear can you guys hear this keyboard when I'm typing stuff? Yep. Yeah. What's the uh, stick R and U? That's the rocker? That's gonna be the rocker and uh mm. 
Yeah. I never could get the uh, presets to work. Well, you got to click on the buttons up there, and you can. I tried all that. Try the zoom now. Uh, click on the. I think you took my control away. Nope, there we go. Mm, didn't. We're sharing. Oh, much better. Nope. It's starting to run away again. Hold on. I'll try and slowing it down more. Oh, that's a lot better. Still seems kind of fast. Yeah, it's still fast. I would slow it down just a little bit more. Right here, so joystick. Calibrate. Ooh, Ooh that was oh. cool. I think that's one of those red jellies, maybe. Uh, which one is it, Danny? Is it hey, X? Ed. Um, you there? Yeah, I'm here. What were those parameters Ooh, we, we started on oh, for sure. the previous the car. Let me um, come back and we'll digital check. stills? Just when you're ready, I'm going to write those down as a starting point for yeah. when we're diving. Stick all as I zoom. Mm. That's, that's my zoom right there. So it's going to be your stick all position, which is on the right hand side of the screen. Mm -hmm. Make speed. Yeah. Nope. Is it or okay. Top right. This one. Yeah. How can that be stick R? Oh. It's coming so. out of stick R. Oh, he missed a lot. Okay, they're all set at 50 now. See, it's like one's away. They are proportional, though. It's just one's away, though. As soon as I bump it, it's. Um, set it on constant. Hold on, let me see something here. Yeah, I use the buttons. I think you should set it on constant and let's see how that how that works. Okay, joystick, calibrate. That would be in the uh, other version. Yeah, there you go. Right. That seems better. Yeah, it still runs away. I, b I barely give anything and just. So, I let off the stick. Let me see the controller. Let me bring it back here where I can suck it up. On a keyboard. We should be watching some other stuff up there. Yep. So I just want to say that uh, the control van is pretty busy right now. Lots of conversations happening in here, but um, what's interesting is that when we broadcast out on the live line, we use the SPL. And I just think it's hilarious because SPL stands for Science Party Line. So this is where we're all commenting and uh, broadcasting out to you on the Science Party Line, folks. And a uh, couple questions about uh, the organisms we might see. Have we seen lanternfish lately? Anyone? Anyone? Uh, not recently. What's a lanternfish? <laughs> a deep sea <laughs> fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Was that a lanternfish? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, Danny. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. I don't think that one is. I'm an engineer, not a not a biologist. So. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. Our our uh, biologist is currently busy. So. Yeah, I think that answers the question uh, we had the other night about how to get out here and how to get a career doing this kind of stuff. And does everyone have to be a marine biologist? I'd say um, oh, that I think no, that answers that emphatic indirectly. No. We learn over time, but um, I think everyone, especially on this ship, it's kind of a learning environment. We all try to learn a bit about each different position. So scientists are oftentimes poking around at what um, 
ROV operations are doing. Um, people are always asking about the mapping, and then ROV team gets into the bio a bit, et cetera, et cetera, video, everything. Um, but yeah, everyone kind of does have their own specialty. And even within the field of marine biology, um, we'll have somebody who's an expert in sponges, and we come across uh, a fish and they don't know what type it is, you know, or vice versa. It's kind of something that we try for here is that you can't always have every expert on the specific thing on board. There's limited birthing, people's schedules, etc. Um, so we do have scientists ashore um, in a s specific science chat or even just on Nautilus Live um, writing in and citizen scientists kind of uh, identifying and helping to identify. Yeah, that's a really good point, Rennie. And we've got viewers right now from Buffalo, New York. Uh, shout out from Hawaii. We also have um, folks in uh, Victoria, British Columbia, and the Maldives. So we've got a uh, worldwide audience right now and uh, complimented by a worldwide crew. We've got folks on board from everywhere around the world. So. Uh, yeah, love it. Oh, and the oh. Netherlands as well. So there you go. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah. Someone's wondering if we're going to see crabs at the vents, and I'm going to put it out there that yes, we probably will, but we will wait and see. Oh, this is very cute. Um, Miss Hermans is going to be on watch in 45 minutes. Um, she is this viewer's computer science teacher. So that's very cool. And um, maybe take a round of favorite discoveries or creatures we've seen so far on this expedition. Does anyone want to pop in and answer? I mean, that whale was pretty cool yesterday. What? We saw a whale? Well, the, well, it was a whale at one point. I mean, oh, it the still whale whales, was still was a whale. <laughs> <laughs> the at remnants. one point, yes, it was a whale. Yeah, that is true. The whale fall um, photogrammetry um, thing happened last night. And uh, definitely you can watch that, replay that on YouTube. But I'm definitely going to have to say when we uh, had to fight an octopus for a connector, Probably the coolest thing. Right. Um, if folks want to watch that, Danny, was that on Monday or Tuesday this week? I think like there's a highlight reel of it out. It was or Folgers, yeah, the or first something. time. It's definitely yeah, it out on social media, snipped up into the into a nice clip. That's right. Okay, yeah, so check out uh, EV Nautilus um, on your favorite social platform and you will find the octopus attacking. Dun, 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 the ROV. Uh, and uh, the whale bones we saw in the bottom uh, yesterday, um, we were at, they, they were first found in 2009, and then uh, they were photographed and explored a little bit more in 2012 by Ocean Networks Canada, and they've been um, monitored ever since, taking a look at different life forms that are um, housing up there, so it's been a, a neat scientific um, survey and finding kind of like a unique environment down there. We've got um, tube worms like you'd find at a hydrothermal vent, so we've got some kind of chemosynthetic stuff happening with the organisms that are around this whale fall, so it's, it's really neat to study for the deep sea biologists to uh, explore, explore these wh the whale fall. Yeah, I think we saw some bacterial mat on, uh, ooh, look at this jelly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it going to come in frame? Or Big jelly. did it go in the sub? Oh, there it oh, is. Oh, there we go. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> so nice. cool. So I'm kind of curious is how old was that rail fall? Like, when did that rail uh, pass on? Like, that's how I'm curious about it. 
Yeah, I'm not sure that, I mean, I know they've been visiting it since, man, what was the earliest image? I can't recall. 2009, I think. Oh, nine or 12, yeah. somewhere, something in there, yeah. Um, but I don't know if they know how fresh it was. We, uh, Nautilus happened to find one um, that was pretty, what we consider pretty recent. That was in Monterey Bay. Um, and we've been revisiting that site and it has been revisited since then um, as well to kind of watch what organisms are present at what times when we first encountered it. Um, it was kind of swarmed with octopus, um, some kind of larger uh, organisms, and then started to less and less and less. You know, few, and uh, the Ocidax worms then working to eat the bones. And then lately, we've actually found on the last expedition and, and pr some prior, but the last one, I think they've happened to find two or more, um, these part of beaked whale skulls persist longer than the rest of the bones. Um, I don't know if it's density or what it is. And uh, that particular piece um, can, because it lasts so long, actually collect uh, the, the manganese crust can kind of encrust over it, precipitates out of the water over time. And this this process takes, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions, where's May? A, a very, uh, very long time per millimeter of growth. Um, so they found these, uh, these bones, these essentially fossil, old, uh, very old, ancient whale bones that in order to have that, encrusting on it have to be quite old and uh, there they at least one maybe two were collected as samples I uh, now W encyclopedia Rennie oh no <laughs> <laughs> just part of the ship that's all <laughs> this is actually one of my more enjoyable parts of this uh, job the banter yeah the banter yeah. and being able to talk and learn about what we're doing and I think I'm and inspire the youth and the viewers around the world. Very noble, and it's true. It's, it's lots of fun. Dan was there. He might know a thing or two about those uh, whale bones. I don't. I don't know if uh, Dan's listening right now. I'm sorry. What's that? I was listening. Oh, you were. Yeah. Okay. Did, did you pick up any of those uh, uh, manganese-crusted whale skull bones? Oh, the yeah, the beak or the jaw. Yeah, the part of the jaw or the. Yeah, part of it. we did pick one up. Yeah, it looked really cool. I think we we found them on previous expeditions, and I think we've collected one, but I think you, if I'm not mistaken, you saw a few on the last one. Yeah, at least two that yeah. I remember. Um, the funniest part was listening to the biologists and the geologists argue over whether it was going to Harvard yeah. or to Rhode Island. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That was pretty funny because someone just asked me about that. Um, somebody who was on the transfer, uh, Jeanette Perlow, um, was one of the mentors of some of the students we had. She's interested in, uh, uh, she's a paleontologist, and um, was interested in, in those specimens. And I said, you know, they go to public repositories and they'll be available to, to check out for research. And I'm not sure if it went to MCZ or the or URI GSO, and that, that's funny that they were also debating uh -huh. that themselves. I think it was, um, it wound up going to URI because it was classified as a fossil. Um, ah. We were able to uh, recover it um, as a fossil. That makes sense. We didn't have a permit to pick up uh, biological specimens. Right. And that kind of sealed it. Right, right. So depth here, 1,800 meters. So approaching time to bottom is in the 10, 10 or so minute range. Uh -huh. And we'll slow up as we approach and everything. We'll wait for our Doppler. Should be in a pretty good territory to set up and creep over there. But we'll try to get the IP. Um, there's also going to be probably a little bit of offset. So we'll try to catch you there with expediency. Follow the cables. Follow the cables. One thing I try to do when I'm coming down, Jake, is have the ROV on the uphill side of Atlanta. Okay. Uh, so sometimes I'll stop a ways up and 
and get that sorted out. Uh, I've got what appears to be somewhat flat landing zone, but everything to the to the east is gonna start to in, uh, increase in elevation or decrease in depth. And then everything to the west is gonna be a bit a bit of a downslope, but then the vents themselves. Yeah, especially when we're coming around, down around the vent. So, Hercules is below Argus. How you have it? Uh, sorry, Atlanta. Like you have it now. That's good. And then if you're on the uphill side, you'll pick it up in the Hercules sonar before you. Um, yep. And we're looking down with the camera, so we have that. You know, but mostly you'll you'll find. <laughs> You'll find it in the sonar. Just to pop back to a question from viewers, the um, hydrothermal vents and the whale falls probably have hydrogen sulfide in, in common, which is maybe why we're seeing the two berms um, hmm. in, this, in those areas. So there we go. Yeah, and the whale fall is in a region that has diffuse uh, diffuse venting of bubbles, some sort of gas, probably methane, I think. Methane, methane gas. Hydrates. Did they yeah. refine bubbles last night after we left? I don't, I don't believe sure. they did at the expected sites where they needed it, near the bubble near, listener. Near the, whale fall, near the whale fall. But there was a couple bubbles along the way here and there. But those diffuse sites are known um, to have uh, specific organisms like clams and also bacterial mats near them. So seeing the mats on the whale fall near, nearby kind of checks out. They wouldn't have far to go. Yeah. Neat. Yeah, and I'm just checking in with um, Fabio, our staff scientist at, at Ocean Networks Canada. And... Uh, We've got some, he's got some information about the, the whale falls and stuff too. So, um, yeah, some really neat similarities between um, what supports life down at, at the whale fall there. Kind of goes through these three stages. So a scavenger stage, um, it lasts about a year. Yeah. There's different kinds of organisms eating at the, the whale. And then an enri enrichment opportunistic stage for one and a half to two years. Is that where we first see the hard, the the two worms, there, Fabio? And yes. then yeah, yeah, and then the sophophilic stage for ten to fifty years. So pretty neat, neat stuff. Thanks. <laughs> and before it gets really busy with uh, the pilot chat, I get it now. With landing uh, Herc, uh, just answer one last question here. Um, wondering about if there are exploration vessels in the Great Lakes. Do we know of any? I know the Great Lakes have been mapped, but I'm not sure about exploration vessels there. So, so oftentimes there's ROV groups that will have their systems uh, mobile, so they can uh, mobilize on different ships of opportunity that have the capabilities. So I don't know if there's any specific um, vessels there or if there were, or if there would be ROVs that are kind of brought to and uh, used whenever there's a scientific mission. But there's certainly been uh, mapping and some marine, ar a lot, lots of marine archeology span done in the Great Lakes uh, with, with mapping and ROVs. I imagine there's some research vessels uh, yeah. that do work in the Great Lakes. There are indeed. We had one uh, of the... Um, no, negative bridge. We had um, <laughs> Sarah here from... Uh, oh, jeez, I can't remember. 
one of the interns we had on the uh, Argus pilots we had on that last expedition was um, working on the Great Lakes, doing research. Nice. I think they're maritime heritage sites. They're really well preserved. How's the package riding, Jake? Is it all copacetic there? Are we doing a video transect or can we look? Uh, I can zoom out if you want. Sorry, was that a question for us? No, uh, just taking a look at the package on the on the. Uh, no, if you we want to zoom out and check on packages at this point, we're good. Yeah, I'm Fly happy. Out. Just wanted to peek. I saw the little uh, rope waving there, and it was. Yeah, it's good to know there's something on the other end of it. Yeah. <laughs> Come back in. It's okay. It's okay. So the total depth here was. Was it 2280? 2271. Yeah. Yep. 2271, 2271 okay. 2271 is the IP depth. So we're just now at 2,000 meters. Should have altitude. That's yeah, I saw a couple of beams, uh, which is starting to get a little with the Doppler. Why don't you, uh, Let me come full wide. Slow down on the uh, winch there, Danny, and let Jake get down 20 meters below you again. Oh, 2-2. Two, two. Sorry, we're still 200 meters away. We should have, uh... Keep Atlanta above Hercules, so minus numbers can get you in trouble. Yeah. I slowed down to 22 meters per minute. Well, Jake can peg it. He's only at 73 percent there. But he's screaming down at 32 meters a minute, so yeah, you'll have to slow down for a minute. Breaking the sound barrier. Yeah, so, and also, Jake, uh, make sure you stop, let's say, 20, 30 meters up and uh, see if you can hold an altitude because that giant titanium sphere and all that cable is heavy. You might come down close and expect, you know, to stop and continue your descent. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a controlled crash landing to vomit this thing <laughs> off the front of the vehicle. Yeah, we wouldn't like that. Good way to test out those new skids. Uh, they've already been tested. <laughs> oh, okay. We just don't want to have a rough landing with that uh, yeah. seismometer on the vehicle. We should have put our logo on the bottom of the skids. Just a stamp? We'll yeah. just 3D print a stamp. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. a stamp. <laughs> yeah. That'll confuse a lot of people thinking it's actual in North. <laughs> oh, no. I meant like, <laughs> like only a set word. Down. Only, yeah, set only down set down, down at, at north true North. Version, yeah. or, or put the name of another ROV on your skids. Yeah. We'll just take the uh, plates off the bottom of the skid and I'll just put it in the milling machine and uh, write Hercules. Yeah. yeah. So we land on the sand, we'll just leave an imprint. Yep. Right after you mill the logo into the front plate, that oh. yeah. painfully oh. blank. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be too much work to put a crossbar and have it just a big H stamp. <laughs> you know, on uh, <laughs> already got the two lines on the back of several ROVs. It says where they were made, like country of origin, kind of. So maybe we could do a thing on the back about you know assembled in Hawaii. Yeah. I've got some new uh, UH machine shop uh, stickers we could put on there. Yeah. Mine was going to burn one when I was home and I got sidetracked and didn't have an aluminum plate with a 
started making all the stuff. Who built it, when, where. So I, we do have a, a question from folks just about um, the timing of our dives. And uh, we, 24 hour operations when we're out at sea, folks. So ship time is really expensive and um, this cruise is particular uh, maintenance of the Ocean Eric's Canada infrastructure. So uh, we've got lots of um, objectives and uh, want to use up every moment we can. So we dive when the weather's good and, and uh, yeah. Coming about 100 meters off bottom. Roger. Roger. RV was moving during that picture. Um, let me know when you want me to stop the winch. Still not getting any gap or beams. No, I expected around 80 meters. Okay. I think that's what we've been seeing with this frequency. The Argus out is also not not quite locked on yet. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't think I think having, I don't know, maybe next year we'll get the sub bottom on it. Nope. No. Maybe we'll get a graph. What is it. wrong with the L2 winner? Yeah. Nothing. Oh, well, it just got it's not as, it's not oh, a, it doesn't go as deep. Oh my gosh. Lower frequency. Patience, patience. I'm used to ones that don't kick in though, 30 meters. Still 30, yeah, yeah. All right, four beams is out for I'm going to wait a second to you. So okay, Danny, take your, uh, off the bottom. if you haven't already, take that stick out of there. He's got it out. Right there. I just like a time series graph of us slowly. Where it, like you see we got this depth curve. one going down. I want the, yeah, ease that I want the altitude going up. <laughs> <laughs> can walk there faster than we're going to get there. So. Yeah. Hasn't stopped some people from swimming in. <laughs> <laughs> so when we were leaving uh, the dock there, we had some range finding uh, binoculars and we actually could see t about 2,200 meters away and a good point of view of realizing how far away we actually are from the surface. I'm going to switch over to dead wreck and do some on the fly. Uh, Resets. I'll just make sure you're out of auto XY. Okay. Okay. I know we did them as we'll training. We'll that in at the down. bottom. Oh, okay. we're still going to wait balance. But you are on TVL now. Roger that. Can I KBM this top screen back here too, Ed, or just yeah, the bottom? Uh, no, it's just the bottom, but I can, you can, uh, wait, yeah, you have a router panel there that controls the top one. It's all about, oh, router. Mm, I see. So I'll, I'll stop the winch at 30 meters? So you can look oh, at the... Uh, you a little bit higher. Um, okay. Oh, oh, yeah, I guess no, I'm talking about yeah, no altitude. When Herc, yeah. When Herc yeah. gets at 30 meters, yeah. CC1 open will give you depth. Oh, and I see you have a, a 40 delta guy kind of. Yeah. I see what's happening over there. You always do. Always do. Terrain starting to show up in uh, Atlanta there and sonar. Attracts with a bathy. Make it more red, huh? <laughs> OK, 
Okay, I believe uh, Atlanta altimeter now, 80 off. I believe Herx, Atlanta's a bit noisy, but... Uh, Herc altitude, yep, on Doppler, 36. Up at uh, 20 meters, 60 on Atlanta, 20 on Herc, and uh, right. see if you got control oh, of it. That is cool. Wow. Okay, I was gonna stop at 30, but I can do 20. Well, that I want to. I want to make sure he's. We might have to give a little assist on the landing. So if he can't fly it, we're gonna. I already stopped it. We're still going down. <laughs> Pilots, cut me out if uh, I'm interrupting yeah, anything. Yeah, you will yep. be now. This is a bad time. Bad time. Okay. Got it. <laughs> um, Jake, go to your uh, auto XY page and double tap the auto altitude for me. I'll kick it on again and see what it does. Yeah, I'll stop on the winch there, Danny. I'll stop at the winch, 22.9. Got it. And at 60 meters altitude, so. You got control of it, Jake? Is it holding? Looks like it's holding. Looks like it's holding, yeah. I would have expected it to work a lot harder than that. It's hmm. thrusting. It is thrusting down, though. Wait. Oh, it's thrusting up. Oh, yeah, it's thrusting up. Yep. Um, where's our waypoint to the north? Uh, yeah, Roger that to the north, e northwest. Um, well, there'll be some offset, but yeah, to the north. Mm, well, it's a lot of slide back now, and uh, yep. it's been Atlanta around, and uh, yep. Okay, give me a heading. North. Going north. Horizontal between the two is 28 meters. Yeah, I should have plenty to spin around there. Two yeah, and a half boxes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> two and three quarter boxes. With, with this tether, yeah. Yeah. All right, I've got a uh, hurricane view there in uh, Atlanta. Oh, yeah. There it is. A little bit. Oh, a little bit tugged. So Let's we're fly back to we're 20 meters away from the landing site. Why don't I uh, I can move Atalanta to where Hercules is rather than because we're going to yeah. need to go in that direction anyway. Where are you right. going, Jake? You need to go north. Yeah, yeah. You you stand where you're at. So for the ROV team, the first spot is the IP. Roger. Yep. Heading to the IP. Uh, I'm going to acquire it. So I'm going to send it all into that direction. Yeah, let's move. Uh, let's do a move now before he gets down. My concern is Roger, that. Roger, we'll do. Yeah. No. Going to go 30 meters, yeah. bearing 330. Bridge nav. <coughs> Step 30 meters, bearing 330. Bring up the porch. Uh, 0.3 is fine. Thank you. If you hold that 15 meter altitude for now, Jake, and yep, uh, I am. see if it controls it. We can, uh, uh, Danny, while you're, uh, we can do a, get the gauge numbers at this close enough while we're moving the ship. Going to log on bottom. We have it in sight in Hercules cam. Going back to uh, gauges. This quickly, you can see what they are. Or Jake can call them. Yeah. I can call them. Motor is seven.
perm is six, main is four, three, 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 four, five. Res exactly is four. Copy paste. Okay, you can go back to one for him. Uh, you didn't give me a uh, preset yet on the controller? Preset one? No. We might uh, forego the weight balance too, Ed, until yeah, we no get worries. the until we get the uh, seismometer off. Sure. I got one on the di way down, so I'm good for a while. Right. Well, after we get the seismometer off, we should be slicked up for uh, do anything we want. Yep. Just want to be careful <coughs> where we do it because we block our view while we're doing it. Ronnie, did you say you had bottom in sight? Yeah, and Herc, uh, just just in front of the gas tights, there's some terrain. Is that is that right? Yeah, I see that. Yeah. I see it on the sonar as well. I'm being overly cautious here. It's just the. You want to just go go crashing down into a vent? Well, I don't want to come down and then have to try and fly around it. Or I think yeah. you know. Yeah. What are, what's that thing weighing water again, Dirk? Uh, 40, 45. Yeah. Sorry, I was saying a different number. Disregard me. 40, 40 50 pounds. I think it was 40, yeah. yeah. 40 pounds. We should totally be able to fly with it, but I'm always worried that I've like totally wrecked the ballast sheet and missed something. If I take off auto depth, I'm slowly descending. Yeah, you know, what's your what's your descent right there on the utility? Let's see. One point. Oh, oh, yeah. Still climbing two meters a minute. Hmm. Well, that's about right, right? So if we're that's interesting to note. So we shot for fifty meters. Uh, sorry, fifty pounds of buoyancy positive. So you're saying 50 pounds, Dirk, or kilos? Uh, sorry, what was that? How much does the seismometer weigh in water again? I forgot. Um, 70. 70 pounds. Uh, let me get you exact number there. Roughly. So, um, so this, it's in water, it's 25 kilos, which yeah, is, I'll do that math for you, 20. Roughly. It's 2.2. Yeah, okay. So you should, in theory... 55 pounds. Yeah. And then the cable right. also weighs something. Okay. The cable weighs 22 pounds, so... In water. Oh, in water, copper, yeah. yeah. So in theory, yeah, you should be good, Jake. All right. So let's jive in with what you're seeing up there on the controls. You're only taking about 20%. Uh, to I'm, I don't think I'm positively buoyant. Button. You need to uh, you need to zoom to the north there. Yeah, Atlanta's gonna be uh, yeah. You weren't in auto X Y that whole time, so you're gonna move in a bit. Atlanta's gonna be on the move at three three zero. So maybe we could change Atlanta heading to three three zero. Yep. You could come down uh, 20 meters, Danny, 10 meters. Yep. Give him a little uh, scope there. Make that delta 35. Making delta 35. Gotcha. Coming down? Yeah. 35 is kind of our standard delta with the 50 meter tether. Is gonna arrive just as we get to the bottom. <laughs> Come on. 
just gonna get all the fun stuff. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. It's like I kind of want to stay. Can, yes. we, can we change Adelaide to heading to three Come back three, three, three zero? And it on the platter. There we go. Make There's some stuff. structure. Structure in front of us. See what that looks like. So there's kind of like a like a rim here. You can see it in sonar as well. Yeah. Some rough terrain until we get to the IP. Okay. And then it's rough around there too. Memory serves there's some uh, pretty good shelves there. But um, Dirk, don't we want to dump this thing off at the actually not at the IP but at the next to the other seismometer isn't that what we discussed yep that is that says normally we start at the ip and then follow the cable over to the seismometer but our first step will be to go and dump this like we talked about well survey find a good spot for it put it down uh, i'm gonna do a quick dvl reset on the fly we'll do a proper one once we get to the ip I see a cable coming into view. Okay, uh, yeah. You know, wanna see what our offsets are. Uh, some outcroppings on our port side. Right. Is this looking familiar here? Um, as which direction for the IP, we could try to look right if you want, um, Dirk. Yep. So Just let me see your two cables there. Right now you're kind of south of the IP. Yep, we should be south of the IP. I don't know what the second cable is there. Um, but I, I bet if you follow those cables, that will lead you to the IP. Raj. To, if you follow them to the right. To the right, yeah, I yeah. think so. Um, Atalanta is being slow. Instrument platform. But I don't want to overshoot it either. So. Yeah, our, our site layout diagrams for this particular site aren't too accurate. We haven't had a lot of time to survey cables yet. Right. Let's see if I can get this to be longer. It's a bit of a guessing game. So for folks listening, the IP uh, stands for Instrument Platform. That looks just like white tape on there, right? Yeah, looks like. So just white. Yeah, if you follow it to the right, you're gonna should start getting more and more cables, but this is uh, for sure this is this one, but this. Yeah, our nav might be quite far off, actually. Yeah, trying to sort that out. Because I think the, I think the IP should be essentially east of the of these cables. East. Yeah. East. But we don't know. Yeah. East of this point of the cables, or we don't know where. If we are, kind of, I think by following these cables will give us our down. best bet. But yeah, yeah. Drop you down to high to have a little bit faster refresh. Okay. It's not really lining up with the map right now. Yeah, Raj. Um, I'm going to keep moving Atalanta in that direction, though. Go another step. Uh, 330. Yeah, one of these should be yellow, one of these should be white, and that means the platform's towards the east. So okay, you can definitely. Um, you can rack your camera out if you want, Jake. You don't have to look at all that. Jewelry. Definitely one is white. I don't know about the other one's yellow. Yeah, so I'm just deciding on where to put Atalanta, so if you have any information about... Let's uh, hold off on a ship move for now. Yeah, right? Roger. Let, us, let us run the leash out, and then we'll, yeah. then we'll deal with it. Roger, roger. Pretty much, if this is white and yellow, then this will definitely take us to the IP. There's another meeting. one joining up from yeah. the left. Okay, so, so I think the one on the left there goes to the um, broadband seismometer, but the IP should be close by, within 15 meters or so. Raj. Um, might be. Uh, 
I seem to remember this about this yeah. site is the it's quite far off being a bit off. They kind of come up through a pass, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. It's IP should be dead ahead. Yeah, and IP yeah. is instrument platform. Another one joining folks. from the right. Yep. No, it's just the nav is off. So they'll set it, they'll adjust. Yeah, we'll adjust by turning off the bathymetry and all the waypoints. <laughs> <laughs> just do a mental mental shift of everything, uh, usually. <laughs> Drop our own Dirk, targets. Dirk, is this the site of the Great Robot Wars of 2015? The Great Robot Wars? Yeah, remember that? All the tie rats on the back or the bottom? Of the I heard about like that. I wasn't, I wasn't on that cruise. Yeah. Where things kind of got a little out of hand, yeah. yeah. But Ed, you are correct. That site is somewhere around here. Yeah, this looks like it. Okay, okay so that's the can. That's good. So do you want to do a nav reset here? Uh, no, we want to get to the IP okay. still. Um, although since you paused, I'll do a quick one. Yeah, our site layout is pretty sparse. Come, you can wow. stay a little There's higher, Jake, because yeah. oh stay in, you know, straight ahead. four or five meters or so. Roger that. Otherwise, you're going to dust it up, and then you'll be lost. Where's the IP? Hudge. All we got to be able to do is see it from afar, and we don't have to be close up at this point. It's pretty yeah, pretty far, isn't around. it? Where are those lights? The nav is coming. Pardon? Quite far off. Is there a cable tie? Yeah, I don't know. Something happened down there. I wasn't on the cruise, mm -hmm. but it was like. I'll tell you about it. At cable tie time. graveyard. Okay, so uh, Dirk, me, which um, um, which one do we want to follow to get over to the seismometer? What we're looking for is the cable to the seismometer is connected to if you on the south side of the platform to port J1. It's got red. It is, should be the first um, connector. <coughs> Renny should be able to work out uh, what the range of bearing to the seismometer is based off the old. Yeah, Raj, um, trying to get the adjust the sound speed too, so see if I can get this offset a bit fixed. I will get the range of bearing to the BBS. We've got a should be roughly north the of the IP. Dirk, Dirk will have one too, right? I do have 20 one. 20 meters more. north of the IP? Yeah, at 356 is what I have. But yep. Okay. Yeah. 20 sure. meters north of the IP. Right, and so let me just put a quick little we'll come back. cursor there. That's where you're going. You want to uh, take a fix it's here, Randy, while we're it's above just it? hard. Uh, right now, well, I, I want to adjust my sound velocity for Sonardyne to make sure that we're getting a best situation here, so just give me a second. Okay, come up, Jake, come yep. up uh, a few come meters up. and uh, five, six meters and get right above the IP and just hang out there for a while. Let uh, Rennie do his thing. How's our Atalanta positioning? Are we okay right now? Yeah, yeah we're, we're good. Okay. Let's look at it in bubble so he can get a good average fix on it, but come up quite a bit, you know, you can be five meters above it if you want. We'll get to uh, hang out here for a couple minutes and get uh, uh -huh. some average fixes while he gets it dialed in. Then we know where we're starting. Right. No, it didn't really help that much, did it? It's quite offset, no matter how you shake it. Yep. Even if the ship, even if we were directly below, I mean, that's quite, we're, we're quite off. But yep. if I remember that about Mothra, we've never, our, our, we've never been close to no. on for Mothra. No. It's always been, I think, almost the same offset. Well, we'll find out if you get fixes for everything, which I'm assuming you're doing now, right? Roger, getting a... Uh, let me do a quick... You're out of auto XY? Yep. Okay, do a reset there. 
Let me it's get some. You're over the IP, correct? Yes, directly over the IP. Okay, let me just mark some targets here. So, the Passover. Uh, Maybe put this year's in a different color. Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> What's the 2023 20, nav waypoint color choice? Yeah, we will have this P. Roger. You out of here? Quick watch change of video. Up. When yes. You, when you have a sec, could you grab our current waypoint? This can do, can do. That is what we're doing. We're taking uh, average fixes. Getting a good waypoint here for the uh, 2023 Mothra position. Zero depth plus altitude. 22. 79. Okay, I have that up on the screen there. Do you have that data? Yeah, just a sec. I'll take a snapshot. Right. Watch. Thanks, Remy. Yes. All good. You can take it down whenever. Okay. <clears throat> oh, you're managing two. Two nav screens. What's that? No. Where did my what kind of color is that? I don't, yeah, I want to switch it. I'll let um, <coughs> Megan, who's going to be undoubtedly better at color management than me, <laughs> she, can, <laughs> she can handle it. <laughs> there we go. That's pretty. Definitely heavy. Positive 25 on the seat. Plus 25.
Can you hear me okay, Dick? Yeah, I can hear you. Got it. Hmm. I always got to turn these down because the cheap headsets, you got to turn them way up. These ones, I sit down and plug in, and it's like. <laughs> Can I just jump in for a second? Go ahead, Dan. You got your fix there. We can head off to the... Uh, Roger, heading north to the uh, 20 meters to the BBS. Is that where you're heading, right? Am I following those two cables? So let me... Do you want to position Atalanta, or you just want to follow it with Herc and... I, th I think we're good for now. Yeah, we'll just... We, we should have the... Roger, scope. I don't know which cable to follow, um, and but I do know it's roughly north-ish. Yeah, we'll find it. Thanks. Yeah. Raj. It's one of those, <laughs> one of those cables. Uh, Unless they want to inspect the IP any, but I think we got to drop this thing, not right? with this yeah. thing. Yeah, Raj. Hey, Dirk, are you back there? Uh, are you talking to me? Yep. Okay, are we ready? What was your uh, range and bearing again? 20 meters at what? At uh, 356. Right. 356. There's also a red cable heading towards there. Uh, PBOF of red tape. Roger. Okay, switching over with Megan. Roger, thanks, Ronnie. Thanks, everybody. All right, these yeah, two thank cables. you. What? Do you have a question for? judge of how far away you are from Atalanta because it's got the boxes all funky. Yeah, 20, 20, 25 meters. Gotcha. Probably 20, 15, you 20. Can come up a little higher because you're going to blow it out right. if you're thrusting up 25%. Yeah, so you're going to get one chance to land. Yeah. So you're going to have to stay up really high so you don't dust it. Yep. And they're going to want to freaking look around and talk about it, and that's going to, you know, dust it up. So. Okay. Looks like it's right. Are you coming up? Mm -hmm. I mean, it can come up where you can like barely see it and look down. So that's the battery gizmo. Should be that cable off to the right. Um, this is strange. Um, so that's oh. the mud mat, yeah. and that cable goes to um, Endeavor node. So it's neither of those cables. It should be to your port side. Okay. Um, port side. Port side. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to the IP. Back to the IP. Yeah. We don't know the neighborhood yet, but we're getting there. Maybe just back pedal. Mm, yeah, at this height you can just backpedal. You're up high, you've, no, you don't have to worry about hitting anything behind you. Tether's okay. I don't know. Yeah, I can't quite see from here. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. So I wasn't paying attention. He said the bearing was. You said three five five. Mm. Three five six. Yes, yeah, what I have on my. Um, I don't see any cable going at three five six. So you're gonna back if you just keep backing that up on these cables, it will. Yeah, we're over the IP now. Yeah, you're over there. Yeah. Okay, so it comes around the south. Those two goes there. It should be a lone cable. 
coming. So if we go to um, the south side of the IP and the first port on the... We're not, we're not going to get down low. If we, we're thrusting up 25% now, so we, if we come yeah, down low, no. we'll just dust everything and we'll have zero visibility. Yeah, I understand. So if you can just get that one in, the one on the connector on the furthest left, that cable is the one you're trying to follow. Right. So it comes around. Yeah, good luck with that. It should go kind of in this direct, uh, yeah, this direction off, off somewhere. This there. one should yeah. be that one. Yep. Off to your left. Oh, to the left? Yep. So one to the left. This one? Yep. All right. You can see where we've already been, guys. It's all dusted up, right? Weird. Okay, so it goes over. Yeah, that's the one. This one here, yeah, that's it. Okay. So this is what we're disrupting with the viz right now at... Wow. Uh, Thank you, good night. Five meter altitude, so... <coughs> okay, so we're just gonna survey here um, AJ and then find a landing zone and then we have to get rid of the stuff off the porch. But there is one good landing zone so I'll, from la that what I know from last time and we'll just check out if it's still pretty good. Um, we're going to take the both instrument and cable <coughs> off the porch. Yeah. You can stay up a little higher. Jake, all you yep. got to do is be able to see the cable. Right. You're leaving a so dust yeah, trail behind you. Just here. catch yep. up in here. Uh, there's also a piece missing, which is the recovery of the bars. There's a that's procedure, but they can pull it up from the main Endeavour field dive plan. And that's like the trickiness of loosening it, slowly pulling it out. All right, Fabio, good night. Megan, can you adjust the nav screen so I can see the little squares, please? That's what we want. Thank you. you still got it, Jake? I can't see it. Yeah, I got it. There, there's what I want. I can see a coil of... Yeah. Well, it should be the battery box right in front of you. So the way we've got this rigged... Uh, we want to drop this seismometer right to the right where the other seismometer is. Uh -huh. I think there's a landing zone here that we used last time that's pretty uh -huh. flat. Yeah. Somewhere in there. And uh, you got a sense of which way the current, if any, is blowing? Well, I think it's a little bit this way, but it's like nothing. I'm All just saying right. right now. So that means when we land, you're going to have, you know, whatever you stir up is yeah. going to be there forever. Yeah. But yeah. if you can have your nose into it, that'd be great. But I you seem to remember here, yeah, it's, once you dust it, it's that way for hours. That's why I'm concerned yeah. that we fly around and dust it all up and then we're, you know, we yeah, can't so do anything else. Land once and, and then do it slowly. Yeah, yeah. So, AJ, what we talked about before the dive is um, landing it. And then you're just pulling the cable off in a direction that's gonna that we know is gonna reach, and then putting it down, and then go dealing with all the old thing with the old BBS, getting that out of the way, and then starting the deployment procedure. So there's like a shelf here that I think is pretty flat for landing the ROV without rocks on it. Uh, we ain't worried about a few rocks. All, all right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, as you slowly come down there, you're gonna pick your. We just don't want to land on any other. Yeah. And also. Um, oh yeah, there's another challenge actually. It's gonna roll. And if we put this there, how can we w recover the old one? I know we had a hard time with this last time. Is finding a spot where we can land and reach. 
So a little surveying is probably a good yeah. idea to find out okay. where we can put it out of the way. You're running out of cable there? Yep. I'm getting pulled a bit. So when you do put it... Um, you want to come... Uh, 20 meters, and it's like back a bit? three meters from the... Yeah. Oh, from the aux platform. Just keep the... Yeah, so we've got lots of cable. Megan, can we get a move uh, 20 meters north, please? Sure thing. Bridge yes, now. Because we don't want to move all the B-tags. That we want to put Good in morning. the same spot. We are ready for a ship move. We'd like to go 20 meters due north. Mm -mm -mm. Is it Thanks. really hard to get the B-tags out of there? It's in a hole and a hole in the rocks. Why is everybody so loud? <coughs> yeah, we're going to have to. But not all the beat bags. You just have to put enough of them out so that we can put the new one back in. So just going to push them out a little bit, put the new broadband in, shuffle them all a little bit back in. We have to leave ourselves some room to work, too. So where we put this, we need to be able to work around the old one without landing on this one. Yep. Yeah, that's so. the key. Okay. And and have it in a place where it doesn't roll down the hill into. You know, okay. Kind of. <laughs> I think the flat spot was around here, like in this area, but I don't know. It's hard to tell. Yeah, we're gonna move the ship, and then we'll get, we'll get a, little get a little bit closer. Wait on that ship move. We're but just backing off and coming up high because he's dressing up, and yeah, it stays yeah. it stays dusted up here for forever. Very frustrating. Yeah, so that flat spot I pointed out here, that's not a good place to put it because that's your working area around the... Yeah, we got to land there and reach yeah. down into the hole, right? If that's the case, I don't know, maybe you can reach now. Yeah, look how nice and tidy all the cabling was last time <laughs> compared to this time around. When's the last time this was changed? Um, this one we swapped out uh, last year, but then it never worked. The, there's like masses that you should be able to release in order to, for the thing to kind of self-align. Yep. And the masses just never released. We never got them to release, so nice. it was kind of a big effort and at the end it never really worked unfortunately <coughs> In here, down in here, this is all down in here. This is very soupy. Okay. Yeah. The whole sediment. place is sedimenty. Yeah. I remember doing the battery box here and you could like barely see. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty all in, yeah, this this area all down here is really bad. It's a little better. This is kind of a shelf. It's a little better up here and around the seismometer. There's also a little shelf here that's good to sit on. Mm -hmm. but so, AJ there, because they've got this extra 70 pounds, they're quite heavy, so they're thrusting quite heavy to try and stay. And when they go below like four meters or five meters, it just kicks up. So they're just trying to figure out a spot and we should. So a couple things I'll just walk you through here. 